to my channel my name is Nikki also known as pretty Nikki and I'm your new favorite cousin or maybe not even new but if you're new around here I'm your new favorite cousin big sister you know what I'm saying uh whatever you need me to be I'm that girl okay I am her I am she you want to be your woman I might be able to do that too okay <laughs> I'm just kidding. So uh, as promised, like months ago, I told y'all I was going to tell y'all about the surgery that I had. And so you could probably see by the title of the video, I don't know what I'm going to title it just yet. But um, basically, I had the Sonata procedure for uh, fibroids. Yay, because being a woman is fun, right? Um, but before we get into that, uh, I, I decided to do like a little get ready with me because I had to put my makeup on today anyway. So I wanted to sit down. Y'all are in my room. Welcome, welcome. Get comfortable, baby. Take your shoes off. Take your outside clothes off because we near my bed. You know what I'm saying? Don't be putting no outside clothes by my bed or whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah, so if you want to see how I came up with this look. Oh, I got... uh. Sorry, this is so unhinged, but I got lipstick on my Invisalign. That's cute. Um, but yeah, so if you want to see how I uh, created this look, and then if you want to hear about my entire surgery ex experience, it might be a long video because I don't know how much I can actually cut out in editing, but um, stick around. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to insert a uh, TikTok where a doctor shows what the procedure actually looks like on a potato. I decided to put it at the end of the video because um, just in case you want to cut out without seeing it, you know, some people may be squeamish because there are like needles and things involved in the video. Um, also, just like a little trigger warning, I do talk about things that have to do with fertility. So if that is triggering for you, baby, trust me, I understand. If you don't watch this video, it's all love over here. I know you still support me in all things. But I do wanna give all trigger warnings cause I'm not trying to trigger nobody in no way, shape or form. Um, but if you are somebody who deals with fibroids and deals with, um, you know, you're a candidate of trying to get rid of them or doing all the things, I did not see any research on, I didn't see much on the YouTube space, on the TikTok space, on the Instagram space, really that talks about this particular procedure, which is the Sonata procedure as mentioned earlier and probably in the title, but I wanted to go ahead and tell my story um, because it may help somebody else. And that's what I'm here for on this channel is to help other people. So um, if this video can help you in any way, also, you know, I'm, I'm doing my makeup. So if you are also, you know, a dark skin girl who wants to see how to do some makeup. This may be the video for you. Um, but yeah, this is a long intro, but I just want to go ahead and get all of that information out of the way. So if this is something that may be triggering for you or, you know, that if you might be squeamish because I talk about like a lot of medical things, maybe this might not be the video for you. I want you to stick around, like just mute it. You know what I'm saying? So I can still get the credit for the right. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Totally kidding. Uh, but I know you still support me. Come see me in my next clothing haul or whatever video I do. I get it. I get it. I get it. This is a safe space. So I don't want anybody to feel any kind of way. Um, I love y'all very, very much. So we are going to go ahead and get into this video. And um, yeah, so leave some comments. I really want to start a conversation in the comments. But yeah, so again, long intro. But I want to put all the disclaimers out before we get started because y'all my people. So I got to, got to make sure my people is good, right? Right. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get to this video. And there's a little portion at the end where we'll talk. And then again, the video will be inserted in the end of this video. So if you are squeamish, turn it off after I give you y'all kisses. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead and get started. So I usually, well, actually before I prime, I'm going to go ahead and moisturize with a little CeraVe, Ashante CeraVe. Um, so yeah, surgery. Um, so it didn't even start out as a surgery situation, which is where it's like, huh? So <laughs> I'm gonna take these out. So I had just gotten, um, like 
new insurance. So for me, I'm like, let me go ahead and do all the things. Cause you know, now that I'm insured again, let me get everything checked from the Ruta to the Tuta, right? So, and if you see me looking down here, it's cause that's where my mirror is. So I figured I wanted to get everything checked out. So once again, let me make all of my appointments. So initially I had went with a different doctor and um, I'm gonna tell you about my experience with that doctor and then we're gonna get into everything else. So I made um, a appointment with a gynecologist, OBGYN, I don't know the technical term for it. Um, so I made my appointment, went, got everything checked out or whatever, and she was like, your uterus is enlarged. And I'm like, well, I don't know what size it's supposed to be. So what does that mean? And, um, and so she's like, you know, I'm going to order for you to have a, um, ultrasound done to figure out why it's enlarged. So I'm like, all right, cool. I don't know what any of this means, but that's fine. So I did the ultrasound and um like i didn't tell anybody about it because i'm the type of person that like i don't like outside opinions whether it's negative positive advice anything like i just want to make sound decisions on my own and plus i'm like i don't really know if it's a big deal not a big deal because she says like nothing to really worry about so i'm like if you tell me not to worry about something i'm not gonna worry about it uh in your professional opinion so I get the, uh, oh, sorry, it's, I'm, I'm a little out of my element. So this is the Sephora Collection Brow Pencil and I think the color Ebony, yeah. Um, so I'm like, if you tell me not to worry about it, I'm not gonna worry about it. So I go and I get the ultrasound done and the ultrasound tech was like, uh, oh, there it is, and I'm like, there what is and she was like you have a fibroid and she was like actually you have a couple and she's saying it like it's just like you know oh you have a sandwich so I'm like all right and so she shows me on the thing I wish I could like draw it out for y'all but basically she was like this is your uterus like she draws it out on the on the screen draws it out on the thing and then um she's like and then this is your uterus but this is your fibroid huh how does that work why is it bigger than what it's supposed to be inside of how does that how does that work and so um she said there was another smaller one in there and so again, I've, I've had some friends deal with fibroids and things like that. So it's not like I'm completely aloof to fibroids, but I had never dealt with it myself. So, um, I mean, it's different when it's you, you know what I mean? So I'm like, cool. So I was supposed to have an appointment with the doctor to go over the results from the ultrasound so the thing is is like like i said the tech told me that there was fibroids you know how you get your your my chart information you can see but it's like i'm trying to google everything from my my chart because i don't know what none of this stuff means and um yeah so i'm waiting on my explanation with the doctor so we were supposed to do like a telehealth thing now again new with insurance new with all the things so I don't know how y'all telehealth is set up or whatever because in my my chart if it says the doctor's gonna give me a call at let's just say it was noon I believe it was noon it says the doctor gonna give you a call at noon I'm waiting by my phone at noon noon comes noon goes so I'm like I gave her the 15 you know the uh the undergrad 15 minute grace period um real quick while I'm talking I'm about to just outline my brows I use the color pop pretty fresh hyaluronic hyaluronic creamy concealer in the color dark 153c and um so and i use the 
it's a brush that I got from Shein. It's the spoolie on one end, angle on the other. Actually, I want to use, actually, it's a different brush. This is a Essence Precise Eyeliner Brush. I like it because it's a little bit more it, fine. It's dirty, so just go with it because that's how we do things over here. But that's neither here nor there. But anyway, so, um, so I'm waiting on her to call me. She doesn't call. So I give her a 15 minute grace period, then I call them and they're like, oh, she didn't call you? It says that she tried to call you, but you didn't answer. Don't play with me. I don't play like that. So I'm like, I have literally been sitting by this phone waiting on this call to let me know what is what. So they're like, okay, let us try to call her and we'll see what's up. So they was like, oh, she had an appointment run over, so she's gonna give you a call as soon as her appointment's over. And I'm like, all right, if you know me, I'm a pretty flexible person when it comes to things like that, cause life, life happens, you know, life be life in. So I ain't think nothing of it. An hour and a half goes by and I'm like, all right, okay. So I call back. And they're like, she tried to call you again and, and you didn't answer. What number does she have for me that I'm not answering the phone calls? Uh, so I'm like, can you give her this number then? So they were like, actually, just hold on and let's see if we can patch you through to her. So I'm like, all right, cool. So we get on. I finally get her. And she's like, yeah, you were supposed to set up like a Zoom or something. And I was like, where were those instructions? that never got sent to me so no and then i'm like did you try to call me then or was you just lying but that was neither here nor there because i'm like i don't care about none of that all i want is my results what's what's tea so she's going over it and she's like you know basically one is like the size of a grapefruit ish and uh the other one is like small like a cherry i guess and they're in two different places one is in the bigger one is in the wall of the uterus but it's bigger than my uterus which I'm still trying to figure out how like what math that is that it works but whatever so I'm like all right so what are my options and before I go into the story let me let me preface with this I'm the type of person give me the facts that's it that's it just the facts and let me form my own opinion based on the facts. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a friendship situation. I don't care if it's a relationship. I don't care if it's a bill. I don't care if it's, you know what I'm saying? A partnership, a health, give me just facts and let me form my own decisions from there. I say that because that's not what happened. And I feel like as a black woman, and I have to I have to emphasize this because it is a thing, but as a black woman, I feel like we have to always be more aware or hyper aware of certain things in certain conversations. And so going into this appointment, I already knew that. I mean, just in life, we know we have to be hyper aware of certain things. Um, but then experiencing it, I'm just like, I don't like that. So basically, this is how she runs it down to me. Cause I like, I'm taking notes on my iPad. Cause again, I like facts. So she's like, uh, you have two options. That was what she, she hit me with. Now, mind you also, if you know me or if you don't know me, let me just tell you this about me as well. I am a researcher. So from the moment that I found out that there was a chance, well, not even a chance. Cause I saw it on the screen that I had a fibroid. I did all the research. Um, and I'm a visual learner. So I'm a TikTok and YouTube you know, call it what you will. Some people are readers, some people are visual. I need to see what it is that you're talking about. I need to visualize it, all of the above. So I've already done a ton of research on what different options are for surgeries, for medication, for leaving it alone. I've done all of it. So when she hits me with the, uh, you got two options, I'm like, well, you are the medical professional. So I'm not gonna think that my little TikTok and YouTube uh, research, you know, trumps your 
degrees. You know what I'm saying? Since you got your degree and you know everything, I'm gonna trust <laughs> your medical opinion to an extent. So basically she was like, all right. So she's like, I mean, if you want to be technical, you can just leave it alone. But if you are somebody who eventually at some point wants to have children, then you need to take care of this. So I'm like, all right, that's an option, whatever. So I fast forward, she's like, um, so the medication, here's the deal with the medication. Basically the medication will give you the side effects of the medication is basically the same as uh, menopause. And she's like, because of your age within like the next, you know, 15 ish years, you may be experiencing menopause. Um, the, you would experience the same thing now that you'll experience in a few years anyway. And so then she was like, and also it doesn't do anything to the fibroid. It just subsides the side effects. So one of the side effects is having super heavy cycles. And I've had super, super heavy cycles my entire life. I just thought some people have heavy cycles. Some people don't. I didn't know it wasn't um, normal. I, I just thought that that's what it was. I'm supposed to be doing my makeup. Um, what do I want to do next? I do foundation next. So I'm gonna prime again because I feel like it kind of soaked in because it took a long time to do that, uh, to, to, to get to this stage. And normally, I, I, I say this every time I do a little get ready with me, I don't do my makeup sitting down. So this is all kind of foreign for me, but I wanted to do a sit down video without the echo of my bathroom. So here we are. But so anyway, so basically she's saying my one option is medication and but the medication does not do anything to the fibroid so the fibroid is still there you just won't have the symptoms basically because it's gonna block your cycle for a, an extended period of time but the side effects of it is that you will basically go through all the symptoms of menopause from the flashes to you know all the thing, hormonal changes all the above who wants to deal with that when I'm already gonna have to deal with it eventually anyway and it's not gonna get rid of the, the issue itself so oh foundation is Too Faced Born This Way matte 24 hour in the color tiramisu I'm a tiramisu girl so she basically like but the way that she says it is like I mean this is your option but you don't really want to do this so I'm like okay um so then uh so i'm like okay so what's my other option and she was like well surgery is the other option so i'm like ooh, okay didn't think that that was gonna be all i had but i'm like which surgery uh do you are, are my options so she was like technically you have uh three options um for surgery uh one being a full hysterectomy where you just go in snatch everything out um, but she was like, but as you've already told me that you would like to have the option of having children. So that would take that option off the table. And then she's like, but this other procedure is, um, it's new. And I think you'd be an amazing kid. Like her whole, her whole energy shifted as she starts to talk about this other procedure. And she's like, it's a newer procedure. Um, and I'm one of four doctors in the city who does it. And she's like just bragging on this thing. Like the energy is different. It's very like exciting. So I'm like, clearly this is the one you want to do. Okay. Um, so she's going through all of this and basically, so that is the Sonata procedure. So the difference between the Sonata procedure and other procedures is it's non-invasive. So Basically, they go up instead of cutting you. You don't get cut at all. It just goes up through your hoo-ha because I don't want to get demonetized, but it goes through your hoo-ha and it's like a little arm thing. It kind of is like that, that game at the arcade where the arm comes down and it grabs something, except it doesn't take out the fibroid. What it does is it like once it grabs it, needles come out of it. I know it sounds real fun, right? Needles come out of it and then it sends... Um, basically like waves through it so that it'll eventually break the fibroid down now it's a newer procedure as in like 
at, at this point now, it's been over a year, but at the time that I was going to get it, it was like literally about eight, nine months in the, the, the works, right? So it's a newer procedure and, um, not everybody does it. Not all insurances cover it because it's literally just that new, but she's like, it's groundbreaking. It's, it's such a good procedure for people, um, who don't necessarily want to have surgery, blah, 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 like an invasive surgery. So I'm like, okay. Um, and so I'm asking her like different questions about it because in my research, it didn't really come up, but that's because, I mean, it came up, but not for real because it was newer. Also because it's newer, not too many, I couldn't find many videos or anything on it because not many people have had it. Uh, so I'm asking her important questions about it. So I'm like, what's the downtime like? And she's like, oh, um, it's a, it's basically like a, a, what's it called? A outpatient procedure. You don't even get, um, like put to sleep or anything. So basically like you, you, she's telling me like, you don't even get like put to sleep or anything. We just go in and she's explaining like what the surgery does. And as she's explaining it, I'm like, why y'all ain't gonna knock me out for this? Cause who wants to be awake for all of that? She's like, oh, you won't feel a thing. Some people, you know, went dancing afterwards. And I'm like, okay, like, please give me, it was given like, you know, the period commercials, like the uh, pad and, and Tampax commercials and things where people be running and jumping in the field. Like that's what she was giving me. Like, no, some people go dancing afterwards. And I'm like, okay, all right, sis. Um. So then I ask her, and this is where, Again, this is where I kind of got a little like perturbed. Oh, uh, Born This Way concealer in the color maple. Maple. So I'm basically like, all right, what does this do to fertility, right? That's the question that I asked. I asked it, um, I said, does it impact fertility? That was exactly how I asked the question. Her response was, no, it doesn't impact fertility. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, that's an ease because again, even though, you know what I'm saying? I'm pushing a certain age and the clock is ticking. I'm like, I still want that option. You know what I'm saying? Cause God can do whatever, you know what I'm saying? Didn't, who was it? Sarah and Abraham, don't give me the quote on the names, but they had babies like in eight hundreds. So I could be the exception or whatever. So I'm like, all right, uh, I'm just going to contour my face. I use uh, the one size beauty and I, I use the middle color, which is serve. Yeah, serve. So she's like, yeah, it doesn't impact fertility. Da, 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 da. And, you know, like we can just we can get this going. Like she's super excited. And I'm just like, whoa, 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 pumpy breaks. Like, let me think about this because this is this is my body, you know, and I, I just got hit with a whole bunch of information real quickly. And you just ready to go. Like she was literally like ready to schedule the surgery. And I'm just like, can I, can I, can I sit with it for a minute? Cause I don't know what I might want to do. I might not want to do nothing like, but give me the option. Like, don't, I know you excited. Cause like you want to afford to do something. Um, but also like relax. Right. So I get off the phone with her and I immediately start doing research and actually like I immediately went to TikTok. The first video that plays on TikTok is a doctor who says if you are a woman who deals with fibroids and have already had children there is a new procedure that we recommend for you which is the sonata procedure so i'm like why why she said it like that so then i went to google and i literally googled the sonata machine and on the sonata website it says the way that they put it was there is no research whether it impacts fertility or not because it's such a new procedure that at that time nine months hadn't passed since enough people have had the procedure to say whether it impacts fertility or not there is a big difference before i get to blending this there is a big difference between there is no research that impact that says it impacts fertility and it does not impact fertility. Those are two totally different things. Now, I don't care if there's no research because it doesn't. The fact that there is no research 
you can't you can't determine that it does or does not impact fertility and so i'm like why did we have a whole conversation about me wanting the option of fertility if you know that this procedure that you are pushing me towards because that's basically what it was at that point might impact it and see i don't like that i don't play like that like again give me the facts Give me all the facts. And so then also when we were before, I was like, so before we got off the phone, I also asked her about a myomectomy because all of my research saw that a lot of people got myomectomies. I've had friends who have gotten myomectomies. And so when I mentioned, I said, would I not be a good candidate for that? Cause that was my question. It may be like my fibroid was in a place that a myomectomy wouldn't work for me. You know what she said? She's like, oh yeah, you can get that. But the uh, morbidity weight rate on that procedure is, is very high. So you telling me, this is what I'm saying when I say like, just give me the facts. You could die from any procedure, right? So of course the, the morbidity rate on that is gonna be higher than one that you don't put somebody under for, obviously, right? But to lead with that, it's like, once again, you're trying to push me in a direction and I don't like that. I don't like that. So after, again, and again, like I've seen so many people have myomectomies and then, you know, still have babies afterwards, still go on and live, you know, healthy lives and have, you know, lighter cycles and all the things that I'm just like, why wouldn't you present me with that option at all if I am a candidate, which she said I was. So I don't just have two options. I had several. So, um, fast forward, I keep doing my research. Everything that I see says that there is no direct research that says whether or whether or whether or not it does impact fertility every single thing that i have seen so i'm like why would she just go all willy-nilly oh, i guess i could use this so uh why would she just go all willy-nilly and tell me that it doesn't so at this point i'm looking for a second opinion and a lot of my research also talked about how fibroids um, impact black women in particular at a higher rate than other women. So I'm like, I would feel more comfortable with a black doctor at this point. I want somebody who looked like me. I'm gonna be honest with that. That was my, that was my uh, understanding. So apparently like, you know, I live in Cincinnati now. So I started researching like black OBGYNs or whatever. And there was one lady that was like super reputable. Like anybody that you talk to would just, you know, they would recommend her. But because she was like the end all be all, baby girl was booked out, okay? Mm. <laughs> so let me just say like I called and I was like, yeah, I wanna make a, an appointment with her. Like I wanna schedule with her. And they were like, okay. Um, Cause I think at this time it was May of this year. So I'm like, yeah. Um, I'd like to get an appointment and they were like, okay, how is, um, March 18th? And I was like, oh, you mean May? And she goes, no, of 2024. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Did you just ask me what I'm doing on March of next year? If that's a good time for an appointment for something that I'm dealing with right now? Okay, so I went ahead and I, I kept I kept going through with the booking of the appointment um, and I'm like, is th does she have any like a list that if she has a cancellation, like is, is that an option of any sorts? And the person who was like making my appointment was, um, I could tell, was a black girl, right? And this is why representation matters so much. So she was just like, I could tell she was kind of hesitant too, but she was like, out of curiosity, um, do you want to go to her because you want a black doctor? And I was like, yes, that is, that is exactly why I would like to. And, um, she was like, can I make a suggestion? And I was like, can you please? She was like, there's another, uh, black doctor in the city, um, that I personally am going to be switching to soon. 
and she was like everybody that i've scheduled for her they are very satisfied with her this and this and that and i was like what her, what her book's looking like though because if she like if she likes this then i'm like you know my 2025 is real open but i need something like right now and so she was like we could do like two weeks and i was like make that happen make that happen oh so i got these little sponges this is dirty just go with it whatever but these are from amazon and I will try to link everything below. I'll try to remember to link everything up. But I really, really bang with these. I like these a lot. Um, oh, I did not mean to let this sit. For some reason, my chin does not ever want to blend out. It'd be like trying... Oh, I need to wax. Yikes. Um, so she's like, okay, I'll, I'll schedule your appointment for her. Whatever. Great. So I go to the appointment um you know time passes or whatever I go to the appointment and she pulls up my my information that you know I have or whatever the the scans and things like that and so I just asked her like what are my options sis laid out all the options no opinion she was very just like oh first of all let me just say when I got in there all black staff beautiful you know what i'm saying like the the person in the waiting room the nurse that takes you back and weighs you and checks your blood pressure all of the above we talking about hair we talking about like uh you know buying homes we're talking about losing weight we're talking about all the things but it was just like a different level of comfort with everybody in the room who looked like me and i'd never experienced that especially in like the medical sense so that was already like all right god i see what you're doing like i'm i'm, I'm feeling good here then I meet her. She is, I mean, I could tell she was a believer. You know how you just like meet somebody and you like, she got me. That's how I felt. So she laid out all the options and I expressed my, you know, I told her about the story at the other doctor after she laid out all of my options. And, you know, even the way that she approached that situation, like, cause I told her, I'm not trying to like down anybody. Like that wasn't even how I was trying to present it. And she was just saying like, as a medical professional, sometimes we get excited about certain things and she was like uh she can probably feel that she was probably just excited because I was a candidate for it and it's almost like the stars were aligning and that she was just excited and, and got overzealous and I'm like I get it I get it I get it I get it I'm not knocking her she she was an amazing doctor she found you know she found the thing or whatever but I don't I don't want her to do my surgery and so when it came to the fertility question I asked her the same thing and she hit me with the facts, which is there is no research for it. However, what she was saying is where mine is located, she would be able to do the Sonata procedure without touching my actual uterus lining. Well, why didn't sis say that at the other place? Because if you would have framed it like that, I can make a decision. But if you try to just lure me to a certain direction I'm gonna think otherwise so um I forgot I was supposed to be doing makeup my bad y'all multitasking uh I went very heavy with the concealer okay so so basically she's like you know where yours is located it can be the we can do the procedure but it um without impacting your uh the lining of your uterus so it should not impact you know um your fertility whatsoever so i'm like cool and she's like you know understand it's not a guarantee and i'm like i get that all of you yes i got that. thank you for letting me know that other than somebody else who was guaranteeing it that you know the opposite so i'm like all right well i would feel more comfortable with you doing my procedure if you can so she was like all right let's do it I'll have us you know schedule all the things so we scheduled it for July and you know I kind of lived my lived my life <laughs> up until that point um you know birthday all of the above had had good times um and I wasn't really nervous or anything oh that was the other thing she was like yeah so I asked her like what the procedure what procedure day looks like and she was like basically you'll be under general anesthesia and I'm like so you knocked me out and she was like yeah and she kind of looked at me like why wouldn't I and I told her like well the other doctor said that she doesn't do it and she was like well I don't know how other people do it but I definitely would prefer you to be under 
when I do this procedure. And I was like, I would, I too would like to be under. Um, but she did, you know, tell me that not many people have like pain and things afterwards. Uh, she said that one of the people that she had, they attended a wedding the next day, not the same day. Um, so she was saying like, you, you typically shouldn't have pain afterwards. And then that your cycles should start to get lighter after the third, maybe like your third cycle after the procedure. So I'm like, yeah, you have hit me with the facts and I'm here for it. So we scheduled it for July. Um, I had a pre-op appointment like mid July or whatever. So I went, did that. Um, so basically surgery week, uh, they told me like I had to, um, the night before, like I had to, uh, what's it called? Had to take like an antibacterial shower like day before or whatever, or I mean the day of, and my procedure was gonna be like early in the morning. So I had to get there at like six, 6.30. So my parents said that they would bring me um, all of that. So then, okay, so this is where it got a little <laughs> interesting. And only reason why I'm being this like candid about this is because one, I haven't seen anybody else talk about this procedure for real on any social media platform. Well, there's one creator on TikTok. It's a black girl. Um, so she talked about her experience, but my experience was different than hers. So I haven't heard anybody talk about this experience that I've had. So um, I'm gonna just lay it all out there. It may, you know, it's medical thing, so it may get a little like, I ain't gonna say graphic, but it, it may be a little bit much, but just go with it, right? So that is, Whoa. Um, <laughs> but so basically the night before they say that there is this medicine that they want you to take because they want you to, um, so they wanted to soften your cervix for the uh procedure itself so um i'm thinking like oh i'm gonna take a little pill whatever it has to be inserted uh if you can read between those lines so i'm like that's fine so the doctor um she prescribed it kind of late so then i went to one pharmacy they didn't have it i had to go all the way out to a different pharmacy that did have it but they had it so i finally was able to get that i went to my parents house um to just prepare like i packed my little spend and night bag for like the hospital and I packed like a whole bunch of things. I did a whole bunch of research on like, you know, surgeries, but, um, so like I had like really loose clothing and things like that for my parents' house for afterwards. And I was gonna stay with my parents until I started to feel like normal again, basically. So that night I inserted, and they say insert half, they gave you two. So I guess in case like you drop one or something, but they gave you two and said to insert half. I'm glad I had a pill cutter because I've experienced not having a pill cutter and my friends made fun of me because I had, um, I was trying to cut pills before with a butter knife. Just go with it. I didn't know what a pill cutter was. I've never had a prescription before. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit more concealer on as if I need it. But so fast forward, I, 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 I take the medicine and at first it's fine. And so I'm like, you know, I take my take my little antibacterial shower, then I put the medicine in or whatever. And I lay down and at first I thought it was like, oh, am I nervous? Like, what what is this? What's this feeling? Because I feel like my stomach was just like doing like this. That's, that's what it felt like. It was like this. Oh, also, and this is this might be TMI, but th this whole video is TMI. I had just... <laughs> So I had just gotten off of my cycle the day before surgery. So I'm like, we couldn't have timed that any better. So then like, you know, surgery healing, I'm wearing the pads and things, but no. So I had my cycle, it ended on a Wednesday, Thursday. I had one day Thursday without wearing pads and all the above. And then Friday I had the surgery. So me and my parents, uh, oh, so, so that night, child that night so basically what i didn't know until after i took the medicine is that the uh medicine that i took to soften the cervix basically gave me contractions all night long 
yes like like giving birth contractions so it's basically the medicine that they give you when you have um i don't know what words to use without using the words but when you are pregnant but you don't have a, a live baby um or if you would like to get rid of said baby so that is the medicine that i had to take mind you with no baby okay i got a gallon got a little fibroid but i got a child up in there so uh the the best way that i can describe it is first of all i tip my hat to women everywhere who have given birth in any way shape form or fashion because contractions are no joke let me also say for the record um when you have contractions with no baby so with the baby the contractions are timed with the baby moving down to come out when there's nothing coming out it's just contractions so it was literally non-stop pain all night long because it was just contracting but for what ain't nothing there um and when i say like I see now like in the movies and on like Discovery Channel and like when women be like in pain because of the contractions because like you don't just feel it there. You feel it in your back. You feel it down your legs. You feel it everywhere. Like I know my blood pressure probably had to be sky high in the middle of the night because it was just like I, I, there was no relief. There was no stopping it. It was just like contract, contract, contract. And I'm thinking to myself, what would happen if I would have took the whole thing instead of the half? Like they say, like, I don't even want to know. But so, yeah. So I, again, I tip my imaginary hat to all women who have birthed anything in any fashion and have experienced a contraction. Woo chow. Um, so then, uh, so we, you know, we get there. Early in the morning, they get me all, you know, together. I'll try to insert some clips of what. I've got one word to say to sum up my experience of that prescription. Ouch. The cramp game is real. Like my thighs, my stomach, everything. Mm. Don't like it. Mm. But I'm headed. I'm about to get dressed to go for the procedure. Yay. Hello. Hello, my Six. Yeah. So because like I didn't really tell many people that I was even having the procedure done. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm like super private like that. But I also feel like like everybody, everybody do not be rooting for you. And I found that out the hard way um, a few years back or last year actually. But it it just it changed and shifted in how I deal with some things and people. But hold on one second, my mama calling. Okay, sorry about that. I don't remember where I was in the story because literally some time has passed because my mom called and then I got my Instacart order and it was completely wrong, but that's neither here nor there. So surgery morning, get there, still contracting, in a whole bunch of pain. Um, they get my IV, everything set up in my hand, anesthesiologist talks about things. Um, that's kind of that. Where am I at in the process of makeup real quick? Hold on. Oh, okay. So... I also take another triangle sponge that I already have, use this in, and this is the e.l.f. Perfect Finish HD powder, and it's white. It's translucent, but it's, it's white. So, um, oh, like I said, I will try to insert footage of what I did get footage of, which wasn't a lot, so I don't want you to think like, oh, it's a whole bunch, um, but I'll try to, to, to do the things. So basically, I mean, surgery, surgery, like I was, they started to wheel me back and it was like, we're going to give you a little something to relax you, baby. That <laughs> was the first time that I had any relief from the, uh, 
the contractions. So I was knocked out before they even got the anesthesia in me. Like, I remember falling asleep like in the hallway, like, you know, I prayed with my parents first um, and going back in the hallway, then going into the room. And I remember them like having me like scoot over to the other bed and that's the last thing I remember. So then coming out of um, anesthesia was the hard part. So apparently like surgery went great. It was amazing. Everything that they needed to do, they needed to do. But coming out of the anesthesia, whoever, I don't know the girl's name. I want to say it was April, if I'm not mistaken. But whoever was my nurse coming out, sis deserves all the things because she was amazing. She was so, mind you, I was like out of it. So it could be a figment of my imagination. But from what I remember, she was really, really good at what she did because she was very like comforting and like, basically like before they could go and get my parents like they wanted to get me to a point where i wasn't like ah because i came out and i was sick so i kept throwing up and kept sorry tima kept throwing up kept throwing up kept throwing up i've never experienced that with anesthesia before so like i kept getting sick trying not to get sick and then i couldn't wake up like i kept going back to sleep and but the only thing that i would wake up for was to throw up so she was like literally like putting a little thing under here. She was rubbing in my back. She was putting things on my head. Like she was running to get anti-nausea medicine. It wasn't working. So then she would put a little bit more and then the anti-nausea medicine would make you go to sleep. So literally as they're trying to wake me up from anesthesia, they had to kind of put me back to sleep a little bit because I, could, I just kept getting sick. So unbeknownst to me, this went on for like hour and a half, two hours. I didn't know. Um, because I was out of it. So my parents at first was a little concerned because, you know, they told them like surgery's over so that, you know, how it is you anticipate and seeing your family member and then all of a sudden you like, okay, so is, is everything good? Because like, where's she at? So um, basically they had to let me sleep for a little bit longer. So I'm just taking this brush. I think this is also from Shein and I just get rid of the residue powder that I baked with. Um, so they had to let me sleep a little bit more, but then even still, when I got up, I was still nauseous. Like I wasn't getting sick, but I still felt sick. Right. So, um, like my parents came in and they like kind of briefly was explaining that everything went good. Apparently like they had to, um, do the Sonata procedure on the bigger fibroid three times to, to get it to to break that, that thing was fighting back. You know what I'm saying? That was how she explained it, is that it was swinging back a little bit. So, um, but they got it. And I think they said they were able to get to the smaller one. They were able to do my pap smear, like everything while I was down, which is all fine by me. Cause I didn't feel a thing. And even like, there was no pain afterwards. Like I don't remember experience. The only pain that I felt was like in my throat from throwing up. And then the next day, like my core was sore, but not because of the procedure, but because of throwing up for almost two hours straight. So um, there was that. I'm gonna take the same brush and I go in with the, 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 the don't look, the, the, just don't judge, okay? Cause she been through some things. She been through a lot of travel, but this is in the shade 80 or Sienna. And this is the F Sephora collection, um, micro smoothing powder and I really like this stuff um but yeah so go home I was just excited that the uh contraction pain had stopped I didn't really care <laughs> about anything else except for that so I didn't have any pain whatsoever I just felt out of it so like I went back to my parents house fell asleep whatever um yeah but following that um, I ended up being really sick because of the anesthesia, like really, 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 really sick. Like had to go back to the doctor. Didn't feel like myself, um, felt like mentally off a little bit, but then also like I couldn't sip water without feeling like I was going to throw up. And this went on for, I kid you not, two weeks after surgery. Um, 
So again, the surgery itself, I didn't have any issue. Well, hold on, we'll get to that in just a second. I didn't have what you would think to be issues, but there was one side effect that nobody told me about <laughs> that, of course, post, I did some research on and found it to be true. Okay, so these are just blushes that I've had for a bajillion years. Um, every, it, it, they're from the company La Femme, La Femme, and then I just added a, added them to, they come like in the individual discs, and I just added them to this palette. So, the side effect that nobody told me about was, um, I call it, well, let me just tell you what happened. So one day, after surgery, I am going to Chipotle. And when I come in, as I typically do, I take my pants off because, you know, this is the pants free house. We, you know, home alone or whatever. And I took my pants off and I was like, whoa, wait a minute, because I had on some gray joggers. And I just saw this really, really, really dark spot on them. And I'm like, what? Not dark like in like, like cycle or anything. It was like I had peed on myself. But I didn't feel that happening. Yeah, so uh, I call it your water breaking. And so this was like maybe four or five days after the procedure. Like I had to wear like, again, TMI, but I had to wear a pad like immediately after because like it, you would have like spotting and things like that. So I think it was like maybe three days later the spotting had stopped. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like I can just go back to regular underwear, whatever. And, um, and also you can't, and like there's no, tampons or anything. you can't insert you can't submerge in water or anything like a bath and you can't have anything go up in there for a little while um and so uh fast forward to that day like i'm walking around and didn't realize that i was like leaking didn't feel it either that was the other part so um yeah the whole leaking thing is just like i guess they fill your uterus up with like a some type of a liquid to in order to get to everything and it starts to come out but there's no warning for when it comes out and so at any given time it could look like you peed on yourself so i basically and i kid you not that went on for a month so i had to wear like pads every day for a straight month um because it just didn't stop and then one day it just stopped like out of the blue it just stopped happening so um there was that wasn't <laughs> used to that uh also in my well i don't know if i want to let's just say a lot of things that happen when you give labor happen to me with this procedure and i feel like i should just get like a baby just for gp because i had to deal with a lot of things that people who have babies have to deal with so i just think it's like it's like you know what i'm saying it's just a fair trade that i should just like get a kid because out of it because i went through so much but let's just say i had to get some uh stitches down there too so there <laughs> there's that that we are telling all our business but again i'm doing this because somebody else may want to have this procedure and i just want to keep it a buck with you okay so i already put my blush on i already put my blush on mm -mm -mm -mm. <sighs> okay so hold on i'm gonna do makeup stuff real quick since i think i'm behind schedule on the makeup but uh ahead of schedule on the <laughs> story so hold on let me just this is the sephora collection uh eyeliner i don't know what color it is but i like it hold on okay Okay, so yeah, so basically the, the I, I didn't feel good. I didn't feel like myself for like two weeks. And then um, with the with the feeling queasy, so I ended up going back to the doctor and um, like she checked everything. She said everything looked fine. 
told her about the leaking thing. She's like, oh yeah, that's a thing. Um, she gave me some anti-nausea medicine and, um, yeah, I also didn't have to take pain medicine. So they gave me like the, the oxy, like the, 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 the heavy hitter stuff. Never had to take that. Um, I did take, uh, ibuprofen for like the first couple of days, but it was just more of a precaution because I was like trying to get ahead of pain that actually never happened. So <laughs> there's that. So I will say like literally it is a pain free, uh, procedure. So since then, um, I had my, I think eight week checkup a couple weeks ago and, um, but they didn't like it do any exam or anything because again, you're not really supposed to have anything inserted after that happens. So, um, she didn't want to do anything to like compromise in any way. And I have had like two cycles since then and they were the same. So I was a little like, what did I just go through all this for? <laughs> like, just keep it at a buck. I was just like, what, what, what was all this for? Um, because they were still just as they were. And when I say like heavy cycles, I mean like I would go through a whole thing of pads and like a whole package of them in like the first two or three days. And then they would last six and seven days. Not ideal. It got to the point where I just didn't want to leave the house because like I didn't want to mess up my clothes. You know, my, my bed sometimes would look like a crime scene. Like, you know, I just didn't want to go through all that. I never got my iron checked. I know a lot of people, cause I'm always cold. So people was like, you probably anemic and because of that. And I'm like, I never got it checked though. So that was neither here nor there. Um, but I will say like, again, TMI on my cycle right now, but this one, this is the third one and it is seeming to be a little different. So I'm excited about that. <sighs> because I just want, I'm looking for my lashes. Um, I just want a little bit of, you know, to make it seem like it was worth it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you have like any questions or anything, like feel free to drop them in the comments. Like I'm pretty much an open book. I told y'all everything that y'all probably didn't want to know about me about it, but we, we're here, we're here with it. And I feel like if we not telling our story, that, ooh, oh, and oh, uh, um, <laughs> went a little heavy there. Yikes, blam, 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 blam. Okay, uh, but I feel like if we're not telling our story, then, you know, you are not helping anyone. And that is why I feel like God gave me a platform is to help people. And this is not what I thought, you know, I would ever be given any information on, but you know, we had now. So it was a, it was a good procedure though, overall. Um, so now I think she said in December, they'll do another, uh, ultrasound to, to check, um, to see how much shrinkage, if any, which I think it, I, I feel like maybe it has, I don't know. My stomach doesn't look any different, but um, cause you know, I'm a thicky, thicky, thick chick, but that, you know, that has not changed whatsoever. But, um, at least that I noticed, I don't, I don't know. Um, cause I've never really had like a, I've, I mean, I've had a stomach, like I've had a pudge, but I've noticed in like more recent years and it could just be, it could be like a lifestyle thing, could be like a weight thing, could be, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Cause also like on top of this, I basically have like the perfect recipe to gain weight. Fun, right? Um, when you already don't need to gain a lot for real. Um, but that's neither here nor that. I don't know what lashes these are. These are just like some ones that I got. Cause I had gotten some from Amazon a little while back and it was like a package of like six or eight of them. And I really enjoyed those lashes. And when I reordered them, like I literally used the same link and everything and just hit reorder, but the lashes that they replaced it with were not the same. So this is actually two different lashes that I stacked together because they ended up being a little too thin for my liking. I like, you know, big butterfly lashes for real, but not like the real like heavy ones. I just like you to be able to notice it on me. Um, so 
yeah, so that was the um, procedure that I had. Hopefully things start to really change for me soon, cycle-wise. That'd be really, really great. And I'm excited for the end of the year to see where I am with the size. Hopefully that thing is gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want nothing in living in me, living off me. You can't be living up in here. You ain't paying no rent. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to contribute. And you are not. Which I guess it would be a technical. It is contributing because if I'm doing a YouTube about YouTube video about it, then it is contributing to my life. But that's neither here nor there. That ain't what we're talking about. You got to go. Because you've been living rent free here for a minute. Right? Um... But yeah, so I wanted to do a video. I wanted to tell y'all like where I've been, what's been going on and that kind of thing. But then also, like I said, I didn't really see many um, videos or anything about the procedure itself. And like I said, I had a, a positive experience. Like I still don't know what the impact on fertility <laughs> is, if there was or was not, but I have heard that since then there is more research because more time has passed. So women who had the surgery, I believe, um, don't quote me on this, but I believe there have been um, two live births of people who had the procedure. And if I'm not mistaken, one was um, naturally conceived and then the other they went through IVF. And then there was a third pregnancy that did not come to term so far. So when I say this procedure is new, new, um, it's it's very, very new. And that was the last uh, information that I found out about it. Um, you know, preferably one of these days, God will just, you know, hand me my husband and then we'll see. You know, I can be, I can be one of the statistics of uh, success for it, if you will. Um... But yeah, that that's kind of, I'm trying to think if there's any other details about it that I left out, which I feel like I did not leave any <laughs> stone unturned when it came to this. But it's, um, it, it's been an interesting journey, honestly. Like, shout out to uh, my friends who have gone through things that were, you know, there to discuss and talk and be a sounding board because all of this is, is new territory for me. Um, but it's, I think I, what I liked about it is that I had access, thank God for me having access to do something about it. So I'm like, I, it, I, it's not lost on me that that was the case. Cause like I didn't have any issues with like insurance paying for it and, and things like that. So I was happy about that. I also joined, um, so if you do have fibroids or deal with fibroids or have dealt with them, there's a Facebook group and I'll link the group below uh, as well. So that was kind of helpful because um, pretty much in a Facebook group, I searched Sonata and some people have had it and some people had not so great experiences, but not many people just talked about their experience at all. So. Um, I, you know, I put my story in there as well. Like I typed it out, wrote it out or whatever, but I wanted to share it with y'all because again, I didn't see too many people talking about it. So I wanted to get it out there. Um, so I'm just going to do a little red lip Ruby woo, Ruby woo, woo, woo. Do I want to line first? I think I'll line first. So this is the best liner on the planet for us dark lip girls. So I have darker lips because I'm a dark skin girl and um, I could never find one. It's in the shade molasses and it's always sold out in store. So I think I even had even this one I had. Oh, I need to wax. Bad. I wax my face. I don't know. I actually filmed a video of me waxing my face recently, but I haven't edited and posted it. Um, so that's another thing. Like I got test. Oh yeah. Let's talk about that. I got tested for uh, PCOS and the test came back negative, which was shocking to me when it came to like, um, like weight gain and 
the hirsutism. Her I think that's how you pronounce it because I grow facial hair. Like I said, I think I even said it in a video when I was waxing my, waxing my face. I personally blame it <laughs> on living in Philly for, you know, four and a half, five years, whatever. That's why I think I, I grow facial hair. But I, I grew it way before then. But, um, and I don't get it in like the normal places that people do. Like I don't have like a mustache, mustache. I get whiskers and then I get it like right here. And then I get like a few scragglers here. But then also like the sides of my face, like not sideburns, but like right here that it'll grow hair. So, um, I definitely was trying to do my due diligence to get that checked out. Cause again, when I got insurance, I was like, fix everything, you know, <laughs> I want it all fixed. So, um, I didn't do any type of eyeliner. I mean, eyeshadow or anything. Cause I didn't bring a brush in here for that, but normally I would like contour I'm not, I'm not leaving this spot. We're gonna finish this video right here. So maybe I'll, I'll do this. Just so it's like a little, um, just a little color right there. But, uh, but yeah, so I got, I did testing for PCOS. They said it was negative. Um, I was really, really shocked by that cause you, I could have sworn that that's what it was gonna say. Cause I literally have to wax my face like once a month. If I don't, I would have a full connecting beard. And I'm talking like on some David Banner type stuff. Like <laughs> not for real. Like I'm being dramatic, but it can grow very long and very thick. Um, I used to use like an eyebrow razor. And then after a while that became not, it, it just made the hair harder or thicker and um, darker. So at least when I wax like, I mean, you can, I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but there's literally like a whole little patch of hair right here that apparently I missed last week when I waxed, but I'm almost out of wax. So that was why I was like, just trying to get through. Um, I'm going in with the Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. This is actually my friend's. I forgot to give it back to her in New York. So I'm gonna have to cash out her for that. Um, I forgot my fan in the other room, but I have a little hair, uh, a little hand fan. But yeah, so I was I was very surprised about the 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 PCOS um, negative, and I'm still trying to figure out like what is the cause of the hirsutism because they also did a cortisol test that was neg negative. Um, it was something else. It was another test that they did that everything came back that like, I'm just normal. I'm just a fuzzy, fuzzy face person, I guess. I don't know. Um, so yeah, that is that. So hopefully, um, at the end of the year, I will have had some, uh, shrinkage of the fibroid. Hopefully they can't even find it at all. How about that? Um, and hopefully, you know, down the line when that becomes a factor that fertility, if you know, I so choose to go that route that it was not impacted by it directly in a bad way. Like hopefully it's just like, Oh, you know, we cleared the plane. Let's we cleared the runway. Let's go ahead and make this flight. And that's okay. I got, all type of stuff in my hair um but yeah so i'm still trying to figure out like what the the, the facial hair thing is about because it's not something new it's something that i've dealt with like literally since i was a teenager um but this is the first time i've actually done anything medically about it to try to find out about it so there's that i also want to get my iron tested as well and i think that's one of the tests that she's gonna do so in december i get another um i get another ultrasound i get another i get my blood work tested i also get my thyroid blood work tested that's a whole nother video for a whole nother day um because that too is a factor of of what i have going on as well um but that's a whole nother whole nother whole nother day uh and i think let's see what else in december i think she said she's gonna test something else so i'm gonna do an abdominal 
ultrasound and a transvaginal ultrasound. So both ways to just check everything. But ultimately, like I had a really good experience with the Sonata uh, procedure so far. Like I said, this cycle has been a lot lighter. I'm hoping it's a lot shorter. So that would be, and when I say like I was going through, I know like this is like the end of the video or whatever, but um, when I say like going through a package of pads, I don't mean like your regular like, oh, the ultra thins or not. no, I'm talking about like the, I used to use like the black box um, overnight Johns that's like super long and super thick and I would go through an entire pack of them in three days or now since they stopped those and they just have the underwear mind you they don't make the underwear for plus size people why we we deal with the things too we want some draws I, I can't get no period draws but that's neither here nor there whole nother side <laughs> Whole nother conversation whole another day but now it's like the purple pack of overnight like the thick ones not again not the ultra thins but the actual like that's what i use that's like the only thing that i trust that i'm not you know messing up clothes and sheets and things um but that's you know that's where we are so if any companies or if you know of any companies that have like uh the the underwear or you know if you have things that i could try out i would love you know any information if you want to just i want to have a conversation in the comments literally about all things like i feel like we don't have to um shy away this makeup came out amazing for me to be as distracted as i was and to be as fuzzy faced as i am baby the beat is beating okay but beat down uh but yeah so i want to start the conversation in the comments because i feel like it's a very important conversation to have if you are a candidate for the procedure let me know in the comments if you have had the procedure let me know if you have any questions like literally i will be an open book i will i'm not afraid to talk about anything that had to do with this like you can dm me on instagram you can shoot me an email my information is below in the description box you can ask the question in the comments it's all up to you but I just want to do this video to show y'all, you know, not show y'all, but to tell y'all what was going on. Cause I promised y'all like three, <laughs> literally like two, three months ago, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the surgery. And I know y'all was probably thinking out here, I got a BBL or something. Cause you know, you know what I'm saying? She needs more, but we know she don't need no more, but so yeah, let's start the comment or start the conversation in the comments. I love y'all so much. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. Share this video if you know anybody who could benefit from learning about the Sonata procedure or if they want to see what I did with my makeup and things. Um, but yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for spending some time with me. I will see y'all first of all in the comments and second of all in the next video. Mm, see you next time. Welcome. In this video, I will try and demonstrate and simplify how sonata works so let's start with simple things so imagine you've got a potato which i will use analogy for fibroid and now you imagine that uh, you're going to cook a jacket potato so the first thing you will do is make a tiny holes with fork in different directions um, and then you put this in microwave for five to ten minutes and then it gets cooked so similar analogy um, sonata is effective for fibroids anywhere less than six centimeter sometimes up to eight centimeters so for example this potato is about six centimeters in length. Um, so this is an ideal um, situation. So the first thing Sonata does under ultrasound guidance is it fixes the fibroid. So under ultrasound guidance, you fix it. Welcome back. So in my previous video, I used potato, jacket potato cooking as an analogy to show how Sonata works. In this video, I will try and extend to understand how Sonata works. So Sonata is effective 
for fibroids up to six centimeters in diameter. So you can actually shrink the fibroids from eight centimeters to six centimeter by using certain medications temporarily. And the second thing is, this is Sonata handpiece, and that is the Sonata devices tip, which is sharp ending. So the first thing when Sonata passes all the safety checks is it fixes the fibroid. And once it fixes the fibroid and passes all the tests, so the inside part we activate to release the electrodes. So depending on the size of the fibroid, these electrodes are adjusted. So if the fibroid size is six centimeter, it is fully engaged. And now these electrodes get heated in three dimensional way. So now it's getting treated. So this is how Sonata works.